Periscope, we make new friends, we make new connection. We're gonna start doing it past the cast soon, so if you guys would like to get featured, you can go to Periscope Love Tribe to sign up. And we are on the Small Business Panel, am I right? Correct. This is the Small Business Panel. So um, we've got a treat for you guys today to learn about how to start integrating business aspects and entrepreneurship into your scopes. And our moderator today is Chocolate Johnny. Please give him a round of applause. <laughs> Give her a round of applause, thank you. Yeah. I might do it this way, not more. So, g'day guys, my name's Chocolate Johnny. Yeah, sure. Welcome <laughs> and to the small business success stories. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'll just introduce these people one at a time and then let them tell them, uh, let them tell you who they are. So we're going to start from the beauties and then we're going to do the beasts. <laughs> Socially Sam, at socially underscore Sam. Jenna Steels, it's Jenna underscore Steels. Victoria, you, Victoria T A Y L U K. And the beautiful couple here, we'll do the beautiful one. Ali Cohen at Frameable Faces, and of course, this is the magic of Periscope. I don't, I don't know this guy from a bar of soap until I got to meet him on Periscope. Doug Cohen, he's a top bloke. Frame of a face, I give him a round of applause and what I'm gonna do is let them introduce them and tell them what they're doing. Good afternoon everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm a bit late. Um, I'm Samantha Martin, I'm from the UK and Ireland. I'm not happy with having one nationality, I've had two. Um, I own a social media agency. I deal with small businesses, large businesses, and celebrities, as in real celebrities with blue ticks. Um, I deal with their online media, their social media, their websites, um, and how celebrities represent themselves online in the best possible way. I match brands to influencers as well, so I'm always on the lookout for people who are potential influencers to work with brands. And I also write for a number of print national publications as well, um, as a featured writer. So I've got a lot of talent going on. <laughs> My name is Jenna Francis. I am the founder and president of the Daily Deal e-commerce shopping site for women called Steals.com. I started it a little over um, eight years ago, or under eight years ago. We're located out of Salt Lake City, Utah, and ship all around the world. And um, I, my handle on Periscope is Jenna underscore Steals, but my name is Jenna Francis. And that's me. Hi guys, I'm from the UK too. Um, my name is Victoria Taylor and my Twitter handle is at VictoriaTaylorUK. I have two agencies. I have a web agency called Media Hub Create and I have a social media agency called Blend Social. Um, I work with businesses of all shapes and sizes um, on social media and helping businesses with their websites and SEO to leverage the social sphere effectively. But that role is changing massively um, since, since Periscope has come into play. Um, so that's obviously what we're going to talk about today. We share. <laughs> We are Doug and Allie, and together we're Frameable Faces. Love that. So I'm Allie. Um, I had the idea ish, I guess, for Frameable Faces, which was morphed from Allison Cohen Photography in 19, 19, 2000, year 2000. And it started off in the house. And then 2008, in 2008, just as the recession was hitting Detroit, I decided to open a studio when Doug was losing his job. So when Doug did lose his job, he said, don't go look for another job. Come work with me and let's grow this together. So that's what we did. And we've been doing it in our small brick and mortar. We are a traditional mom and pop shop 
Uh, we have a retail photography studio in West Bloomfield, Michigan, which is a suburb of Detroit. Allie is the photographer. I'm not. I handle all the social media, the content creation and curation, and I do it from our brick and mortar in our business all day, every day, and have been doing it for the past six plus, six to seven years since Allie rescued me from corporate America and brought me in to a small business brick and mortar environment, and Periscope has really allowed us to kind of tell our story and bring all of the other things that we were already doing on social media to bear in a live environment that's really helped kind of grow our community at warp speed. So that's what we do. Give them a round of applause. Okay. Yes. So everyone, my name's Chocolate Johnny. I'm a third generation chocolatier. My family started Perfection Chocolates and Sweets. Yes, in Sydney, Australia, that's the accent. Um, and I love live streaming. For me, it's changed my life, given me opportunities to meet these people who actually have become my friends and a lot of you out there. So we're going to talk about live streaming, how it's affected our business, and then we've got these amazing two women who are going to tell us how they can help us with your business. So if you guys have got a business out there thinking about doing it, I always say just push the start broadcast button. You'll find something to think about. And there's heaps of people out there, heaps of people who want to help you. So what I want to do is I want to ask Victoria what you would do and how you would sort of help someone like those people out there who are thinking about it. Okay guys, so for me, um, strategy I think actually begins way before strategy. You know, for everybody in this room here, um, most of us are early adopters and most people are using Periscope very, very comfortably. But I think it's important to recognise that there are many business owners that speak to me frequently that are actually not confident to press the start broadcast button. And that is where strategy begins from my point of view before it's even sticking on the camera and pressing start broadcast. For some people, we really need to take it back and think, right, what is going to make us broadcast as businesses? But for those people that are sitting in the comments, we need to look at what it is that, that's putting a barrier up for us. And I, for me, the people that I'm speaking to that are worrying in that respect, I'm asking them to try different things. So whether that's filming videos on their iPhones so they can get used to watching themselves um, before they actually go and hit start broadcast, I think that's really important so people really understand how they look on camera and how they feel on camera. Um, doing private broadcasts as well with, with one person before, before they even go in and do it to the masses. And also as well, using the comments, because I think the comments are a very underutilized section of Periscope. You know, you can meet so many connections in there, and you can get so much advice in there. So I think it's really, really important that, you know, people, people are utilizing the comment area as well. So for me, I think, you know, we need to look at those issues, and, you know, maybe there might be people that have confidence issues that maybe want to speak to confidence coaches even before they, they go and do that. But I think it's important that small businesses really get on board with this now, because there is a, a massive opportunity out there. But the questions that I'm facing are, well, how do we do this and we, we don't feel comfortable? So for anybody that's watching now on live stream that perhaps isn't comfortable, I think for you, strategy starts with identifying where those issues are and, and then taking it from there. So that's where I begin with strategy. And then going from there, I mean, there, there is so much we can do with this and I think it's important that businesses don't just rely on Periscope on its own so, and see Periscope as part of an overall strategy. Because there are people that are making like hay with Periscope by, by just utilizing Periscope. But actually the reality is, is that that's not going to be the way for everybody that's using it. So I think it's important to look at social media as a whole and to look at how we can utilize Periscope as part of an overall strategy and think, well, what time do we proportion to this? And how can we integrate it with other social media platforms? So is that by looking at business pages where we, we, on Facebook where we might already have a community and directly speaking to our periscopes to make sure that they are, you know, they're integrating that strategy as a whole because I, I really think that, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, I'm going to take it all to periscope and, I, you know, I think it's very, very important to remember that we have to look at social media as a whole and, and how we fit it into a sales process and how we fit it into a sales cycle. So, yeah, that, that's where I begin. Thanks, Victoria. Um, I want to go to Jenna Francis. 
Jana owns a big e-commerce uh, website. She has bricks and mortar, but more e-commerce. I come from bricks and mortar, Doug and Ellie come from bricks and mortar. So what I want um, Jana to explain to us, how a big business like yours, and how you're thinking of utilising it and seeing what other people out there can do and how you've done it to grow your business. So for me, being in e-commerce, a lot of people go into e-commerce so that they can sort of hide behind the computer screen, if you will. It's really hard to create, um, it's a very different experience obviously shopping online than it is going into brick and mortar because you can see them, you can understand whether you trust the person, and with e-commerce it's, it's really difficult to um, you know, add that heartbeat. And that was one of the goals when we started Steals.com was to truly connect with our customers. So live streaming has been such a natural way to do that. We've been live streaming since about 2009. And it's been absolutely phenomenal to help me as the founder of the company really connect with my audience, inviting them in to have, you know, talks. And, and it's very, you know, I could use it for a lot of different purposes as far as, you know, selling the steal of the day, if you will. But what I usually just focus on is what uh, the customers want to talk about. Um, a, a lot of it's just niche conversation around you know um, the different websites that I have. We've got a craft one that's more for scrapbooking. We do a lot. We've done a lot over the years of um, you know talks about that and bringing those communities together to inspire each other with their scrapbooking ideas and that sort of thing. And then uh, fashion, and then we've got the, the baby websites as well. And um, have had so many amazing conversations in the past with, with customers on live stream and. Um, one of the things that I really also like to use it for is really behind the scenes because to a lot of people, e-commerce e is so, you really can't picture it, but as an example on Cyber Monday and Black Friday, I was um, saying, hey, let's have a tour, let's go back to the warehouse and I'll show you guys what it looks like, um, what, a, what, a, what a warehouse on Black Friday looks like, right? And let's go and send some joy. The mission statement of my company is we send joy. And so we went back to the shipping station and I signed a bunch of orders and I, I let them direct me. Like, okay, now say this or, you know, that kind of thing and um, put a bunch of free stuff in people's orders. And it just, it just really adds that heartbeat um, and it, it really puts your brand in, uh, to life. So uh, for me, it's, it's less important. Um, it's, it's just about ge being genuine and authentic and it's, it's just an unbelievable way to connect with customers and it, it's most important for me to get the feedback, the constant feedback and um, to really, it's, it's like a virtual focus group if you will, you know, they're always telling you what it is that they think and um, that's, that's one of the ways that we've used live stream over the years is just simply to connect with our customers in a really authentic and unique way. Thanks, Jenna. Okay, so we'll look at different part of a business, we've got a social slash media business. So Sam, you tell us how you used Periscope in live streaming and that story of how you wrote a, I wasn't going to say nothing, but a good blog <laughs> that changed your life and then how you've used it. So for guys out there, if you're not in a retail or a bricks and mortar business, if you've got a service business, we're using, oh, I'm not using, but Sam's using it as well. So there's guys out there who think, oh, I've got a service business. No, you can use it as well. Okay, so just to set the record straight, I don't scope. <laughs> I'm, oh. I'm the only speaker at the Periscope Summit. Security, can you get it? Get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we got a roll. Um, yeah, I don't scope. Um, but back in April, when Periscope first launched, and I write a blog, and I was right, I'm going to review Periscope, and it was about two thirty in the morning, and I'd been scrolling and searching for some time, and I couldn't find anything decent to watch. There was a lot of shite on there, and I was oh god, this bloody review is going to be awful. And then I found this guy who's very famous in the UK. His name is Michael Bourne. He's a cricketer, and he. <laughs> I can already feel the dagger spring behind me from Johnny. He retained the ashes for the UK from the ovens. Johnny hates him. Um, but he's a big deal in the UK. And he was scoping live from a cricket test match in the West Indies. And I watched him and I was like, oh, this is really good. He was, it, it was brilliant, the content he was producing. And there was like 50 people watching. Because obviously no one was using that then. And so I used him as an example in my blog post. Wrote the post. Um, 
So I checked his other online presence out and actually put in the post, you know, I think you could align things a little bit more, just do things a little bit differently. If you happen to be reading this, contact me, sort of in a jokey way, tweeted my article out, and he contacted me. And retweeted my article to his million followers that nearly crashed my website. <laughs> <laughs> and then contacted me and said, work for me. Um, from that then I subsequently landed a number of very high profile clients um, that use my services to represent very high profile sports people online. Um, so I still don't scope. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll never scope, so no. <laughs> But no, look, there's an example of not a bricks and mortar business, but someone who's utilised Periscope just for a little bit and now just has no time to scope because her business has just grown so successfully. So if you're in a service industry and you think, oh, I can't do it, oh, I don't have anything to scope about, just do it. You'll find something. We've all done it. You've got the right people. I've met these people on Periscope that they've helped me. So I want to go to Doug and Ali, who are more my bricks and mortar business, and I want them to tell us how a small retail business can use live streaming and, and what you've done and how much has it affect your business. I can take that. Um, when people ask me, you know, how has Periscope helped your business? Have you money with it yet, How you know? what are you doing with it? There's really three main points that, that I usually emphasize. Um, the first one is, if I can remember, I'm going to complain. I'm under pressure. You can do it. I can do it. Can do it. Well, yeah, so we've used it to bring people into our business and to, and to give people behind the scenes type of things. So there's three things. The first one is, you know, People expect me to tell them, well, how many clients have I gotten from Periscope? Like, do I go on and I, do I do a broadcast and then do we get business out of it? And there has not been a lot of that. It's not like I do a broadcast and then when I'm done with the broadcast, three people call up and say, hey, I'd like to book a photo session. You know, that's not happening yet. If you noticed, if you listened to Joel Kahn's keynote speech, which I thought was a really uh, prescient point, was that uh, so far we've been in the innovator stage. We're not even at the early adopter stage. So most of the people, the average people walking down the street when you ask them about Periscope, at least five, six months ago, they wouldn't even know what you're talking about. Now you ask them, they probably heard of it. And maybe six, seven, eight months from now, they'll have started using it. So, so it hasn't been, there hasn't been a lot of direct business that I can point to in an ROI that I've gotten from my broadcasts. I've gotten a little, um, we actually did a family portrait session for Kathy Hackle, who did the PR for the first Periscope Summit. She has in-laws up in Michigan where we are. When they came to visit, we did a family portrait session for them. That was direct result from Periscope. But that was kind of a unique situation. That's not happening all the time. But the second point that I can say unequivocally has helped our business is we've used scoping to bring our clients into how we conduct business and enhance the experience that our clients have with our brand through Periscope. And I can't point to how much that's increased our bottom line, but I know it's working. And it's, it's kind of a similar challenge that we've always had with social media in general, right? Not all social media gives you a direct, obvious ROI, which is why big corporations have always been kind of slow to adopt it. C-level types want to know what that bottom line is, and sometimes it's elusive to bottom line your social media, right? But when I have a high school senior that comes in for, a, you know, a girl who comes in for her senior pictures, and we're out on location, and Allie is taking the pictures, she's the photographer, and I'm there launching a live broadcast of a girl having her, you know, spotlight modeling type moment for her photo session. And you know, her parents might even be there. Sometimes I'll even hand the phone to a mom and let her take over as a guest host during the photo shoot. And then I take that broadcast, I embed it into a blog post about the session along with a few finished images from the session. And it brings a whole multimedia experience to how we present our work that includes a Periscope broadcast. 
and then their animal, and then their their relatives from around the country or around the world can read the blog post, see examples of our work, and see that behind the scenes of their cousin, daughter, granddaughter having their moment being the focus of a photo shoot. And that's really powerful. So I don't know, you know, when I do one of those and people tell me how much they loved it, I haven't been able to track how many new clients I got from that Periscope broadcast. Yet I know it's made it just that much more of a unique experience. So I, I tell people, whatever service or whatever product you're doing, find a way not just to sit there on Periscope and say, here's what we do. Because some people get caught up in that as a business owner. Well, how would I make it interesting? How can I broadcast what I do as my business? Bring your clients into it, you know, and, and, and use it to enhance the experience your clients have with your brand. And that will lead to a community around your brand, which, which leads me to the third point. I'll be quick. I don't want to dominate here. But um, the third piece is just in talking about the fact that we're, we've been in the innovator stage and we're about to go early adopter. It's a long game. It's a long game, you need, and, and you need to try to facilitate that long game, not just in the relationships you build around the world, because that's kind of how it's been so far. You're connecting with people in, in England, in California, in Florida. Those people might not be in your backyard if you're a brick and mortar, but you can take people who are in your backyard and be an evangelist for this platform. Bring them into your studio or sit them down at a coffee shop and walk them right onto the platform and show them why it's incredible and create some buzz within your local radius so that people experience what we've all grown to love about this app so that people start buzzing about it in your neighborhood and you will grow your community, not just on the app, but in your, in your local footprint. That's why I hired him. <laughs> she said everything. Seriously, Doug? Didn't we say, like, give her a go? All right. Ellie, you, you want to say something? Doug Cohen rocks. <laughs> I'll get back to you. All right, well, let, let me tell you a bit about what I do and how I've found success with live streaming. And I'm like Doug. And I'm sorry if I'm I don't really swear on, on Periscope, so I'm not gonna give you the bullshit. I'm not making millions of dollars. I've not got you know people streaming into my business. I've got 25 people from Periscope who've come from Periscope to buy off my store. And what Periscope has done for me, it's totally given me a brand new website. Whole new website. One of my best Periscopes is when I put my camera to watch my chocolate machine pouring chocolate. Two hours. <laughs> and I put music to it. And I can tell you something, I've watched the replay and I've seen these guys talk to each other. These guys, you, become friends. And I'm thinking, that's so cool. And then when I looked at it and I've said, People have said to me, this is the most just relaxing periscope. <laughs> but I want to dive into the bloody thing. <laughs> so the idea is that you want to do a lot of behind the scenes stuff like a Doug and Ali. Like Jenna Steele's. She does that, that. I remember going to her warehouse and thinking, oh, okay, be a small. And she's like walking and walking. I'm thinking, oh my yeah, God, that's like a football field. <laughs> And the other thing that's happened to me with Periscope or live streaming is Chocolate Johnny the brand. Mm. Yeah. Which I went, oh, I've got a brand now. <laughs> People are saying, I want a hat, I want a shirt, I want to know you, I want to do this. I mean, I, you know, to me I still, I still can't handle it, can't accept it, but you've got to realise if you're in small business or if you're in big business, I mean, we're talking big, you need to live stream. But what I wanted to ask Victoria is about how to integrate it all. And then I want to ask Sam something else. And then what I want to do is open it up so you guys can, can fire some questions at us and get to the nitty gritty of this. 
Okay, so I think it's important for small businesses to look at social media as a whole and look at where Periscope fits into the sales cycle. So what I mean by that is, let's take, for example, say a car garage, yeah? They've got a vehicle launch, so they're gonna launch a vehicle, and then they may post to Facebook about the vehicle launch. So we've got this new car coming, you create excitement on Facebook, you, you do all your, your standard posting that you do on Facebook with your existing community. And then you build excitement around a Periscope that you're gonna do on Facebook. You direct your community over to Periscope to say, look, we're gonna show you around this new vehicle, yeah? And the beauty, because you know we've now got Periscope Live within the Twitter feed, then within that Periscope you put a URL, book your test drive with this new vehicle, directing people back to your website, linking back that cycle, so it's taken them from Facebook to Periscope, back to your website, so you're thinking about the sales process as a whole, and I think very often you know you see people scoping that that don't link that back, and I think it's really, really important to join that, that process and that cycle to think, well, what's my end goal, and then work back from that, and think, think about your sales process and what you need to do to achieve that to get people back to your website. So I would definitely say that for like linking the sales process. And also on the note as well, just very quickly, of um, Twitter, of Twitter, I love you, Johnny. And um, on, the, on the note of Twitter, because, because we have got Twitter that, that's completely live now with Periscope, there's a huge opportunity with Twitter chats. And you know, particularly in the UK, um, we have location-based Twitter chats. Um, I, where, where I live, we have something called East Midlands Hour, um, which I know is every Wednesday from eight till nine o'clock. It's a place where businesses go to network between those times. And the fact that we now have Periscope that appears live within those Twitter feeds, at that time we can tell other potential people within our geographical location, our clients that are on our doorsteps, people that we are looking to prospect for business, we can do that within these Twitter chats. Between those hours, put, put the hashtag within your Periscope and let people see you live. You know, we're, bro we're, we're broadcasting on Periscope, we want people to see our faces. So start looking at your Twitter chats and start looking how you can utilize Twitter chats with Periscope to really like leverage and, and get your face out there so people can see what you can do for them. I also wanted to add that if, if you're having trouble deciding, you know, what is it that I'm actually going to scope about for my small business, um, I wanted to throw it out there that um, I participate in a lot more scopes as a commenter than I do actually scope. And I am personally smarter because of a lot of people in this room. Um, and it really, really, I'm a better business owner because of the value that a lot of people in here have provided on Periscope. Kim Gars, my word. I mean, I've learned so much from her on Periscope, <laughs> on just social media strategies. I mean, you name it. I'm so much smarter because of um, commenting in scopes and it really, and just participating and listening and, and absorbing the value that's consistently put out there day in and day out. And um, it's, it's made me a better business owner because of that as well. So. Before, before I go to Sam, sorry, uh, sorry, Victoria. Before I go to Sam, I've, I don't know if you saw me yesterday, but I'm having an affair with um, a lady called Mrs. Periscope. <laughs> and I am so glad to see this lovely couple because I don't know how they do it, but I'm, they are so lucky they do it together because I don't know, there's a few out of us, there's others out there who are like, oh my God, can you get off that bloody thing? <laughs> what are you doing? More Periscope, more this, more that. Can you get off it? The kids want you to All right, honey, sorry, I won't. Away. You're bringing it a bed. So what I, <laughs> what I want... Don't put me on it. <laughs> I'll tell you about the story when I saw that. I'm not going to do it. This is a family show, mate. Um, but what I want to do is I want to ask Ali how they do it. Because I've got to tell you, you guys rock. I mean, I've got total respect for you both. Because you guys periscope together. You make us laugh together. You make us love you. So I want to know from you, so you can help me, because Mrs. Chocolate watches me. Hi, hi honey. Um, so, so we'll see how we go. Okay, so when Doug said to me, I'm gonna join Periscope, what's Periscope? And we, we, he jumped on it, 
like two weeks after. And we had always been on the same page, which is, I guess, how we work so well together. Um, we have a threesome with our periscopes in bed. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> that's how us co roll. But, um... <laughs> Working together as as a team, as you know, team frameable faces. People complain all the time about how do you work with your husband? How do you do this? I mean, for the longest time, we had one car until our daughter turned 16, and then we got a second car. We're together all the time. And how do we do that? Who better to have a vested interest in your business than your spouse? I mean, there's just no better person to do that with. And if I we balance each other out. So if I'm having a bad day, I can turn to my best friend and say, listen, I'm having issues, help me out, bam, I'm back on top, and vice versa. So it's just, you know, he's my best friend, we laugh all the time, we happen to have a really fun business, so that helps, but he's a best, it, it's the perfect vested interest partnership. So, oh, okay. Woo! Yeah. Is that good? So, listen, wait, wait, wait. She's not watching because the battery ran out. <laughs> Just when I made it to Ali, can you, can we bring her later? Yes, bring her on up. <laughs> this is Johnny. Get in on the periscopes, it's good stuff. <laughs> she actually trolls me, so that's, she keeps me in line and grounded. All right. So what I want to do here is we're going to ask Sam a question and then I want to open it up to you guys to see what you need from us and how we can help you. But Sam, socially Sam, Chocolate Johnny needs help. How can you help Perfection Chocolates and Sweets? But not just me, everyone else. <laughs> okay, so... Everything about your social media as a business, there has to be a return on your investment. If you're spending time, if you're using resources, you're in business, you've got to make money. Like, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm not in business just to play a bit. Like, I actually want to make a living. So for Chocolate Johnny then, he's going to do a periscope, and I think he should hook up with an influencer who has a good audience, have them there in his chocolate shop, sampling his new range of chocolates that are perhaps shaped in the periscope logo. And he's got his influencer there, and they're testing the chocolates, and they're giving their opinion live on air. But then he's got to sell these chocolates, so he's going to ask his audience to comment, put a hell yeah, put a yes I want, whatever, say, would you like this selection of chocolates? And they're all going to say, hell yeah, I want those chocolates because that influencer is loving them, so they must be good. And then he's going to go to his full scope data afterwards, where you can read all those comments back, all those people that said, hell yeah, send them a tweet with a link, with a discount code saying, there you go, there's your package, it's ready and waiting, click that link. Straight away, you can measure the return on your investment. Was it worth his time, his effort to do all that? It also puts the viewer in that position that they said, yeah, I want that. Well, there you go. Just click the goddamn button and buy it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you've got, you've got it. Sometimes people make their social media conversions too difficult for the viewer. You've, you've got everyone, nobody has time anymore. Nobody wants to be clicking to this, clicking to that, put your name here, do that. And you've also got to get as much data as possible from your social media conversions. So even by just knowing all those people that said, yes, I want that product, Retain that data, get them on your mailing list as well, so they might not buy that particular gift that you're offering them, but they might come back again. So you need to be getting them off your Periscope and actually into your mailing list, actually onto your own website, onto your own Twitter, onto your own Facebook business page, because actually, from a brand perspective, Periscope doesn't actually have that much to offer at the moment. It's just a really good tool to use. Everywhere else still has more people. Facebook, like people need to use Facebook for business because it's where the numbers are. Twitter as well, it's integrated to your Periscope. The data is there right in front of you. You can go into your analytics. You can see what your audience is engaging about, the demographics, whether they're male, whether they're female, their age range. So if Chocolate Johnny had 
an audience, and it was all 16-year-old males, well, he's not going to sell them chocolates to 16-year-old males online because they haven't got a credit card to buy it with. So then you perhaps have to look at something a little bit different or attract more females, middle-aged housewives with children. <laughs> They're just sat at home with a credit card in their hand and what to buy. Yeah, there's a lot of money in the housewives. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, They're off yeah. to do that. I get, yeah, I'm going to do that now. Yeah. All right, so I just want to thank you guys and I want to thank this amazing panel who are my friends. But what I'm going to do is I want you guys to ask us some questions because you've got some amazing people here who are dying to help you. Don't be shy on me, please. Hey, can I start with uh, Chris Strub, rubber dub dub. <laughs> Stand up and say it loud, mate, or you can come out here if you want. Oh, sure. Because um, audio can't hear it. Yes. So, Chocolate John, um, how many of you guys in the audience are chocolatiers? Okay, one. Well, so, uh, my, my question for, for the panel is, um, People here that are chocolatier, and that business is naturally very social. And everybody loves chocolate, right? We all enjoyed the chocolate in the beginning of the session, but many of the business owners here in the room are wondering, how can we use Periscope for our business that is not naturally you know, so open and, and interesting in the, in the fashion? Okay. Thanks, Chris, who's gonna answer that? Big. Uh, okay, so you start, then Okay, wait. Totally depends on what your actual business is. Like you could be like me and use Periscope to go fishing for business. You don't necessarily have to scope. If you kind of like for me, I just think, well there's enough people, there's enough social media people talking about social media on Periscope. The world doesn't need another social media person talking about social media. So actually, perhaps I should look for people that need my help. So if you're a service business, that's one of the things you can do. If you've got a product, Go look at people that are going to want your product and then approach them. One thing I, I could envision as well, Chris, is uh, focus groups, or if you think about it, a periscope is an immediate feedback channel. And by involving the audience and asking a question, for example, um, a couple months ago I was going to, I was putting together a new presentation to go speak. And I wasn't exactly sure how it was going to go off, and so I literally went on Periscope and practiced it. And then I went on Blab afterwards and practiced it, and I asked for the feedback. What do you think? What do you think? Um, help me. Give me some more points. It was amazing. Um, so I think, um, depending on what your uh, business is, always asking people in advance, what do you think about this? Then when you actually launch whatever it is, whether it's a product launch or that type of a thing, people feel so much more involved. Like, oh, I said that. I gave them that idea. And it, it's, I think it's a win-win, you know, thinking about it that way. Yeah, and I think as well, gosh, you know, businesses are so diverse. No two businesses are the same. So, you know, Chris, in answer to your question, I would say that no matter what business you are, what service or product you're selling, the key is in the personality because it's irrelevant of what you're selling or what you're trying to sell to your audience. If people don't like you, and you're not selling who you are, first and foremost, then it's irrelevant because people aren't going to engage with your product or service if they're not engaging with you. So first and foremost, you know, perhaps take, take the product and the service out of your mind and, and start building relationships with people. Simple as that. Start building relationships. And to that point, we're primarily in a service industry that yields a product, but our biggest segment is high school seniors. And when our high school seniors, perfect example, we had a senior girl, her name is Jordan. And Jordan said, are we gonna periscope the session? And she was so excited about it. Jordan was thrilled about her periscoping session. And I think she made a comment, she's like, let's just be honest, I'm only here for the periscope. <laughs> so, but to go back, a lot of boys don't really give a rat's ass about their senior pictures, they're doing it for their moms. But, I can say 9.9% of 9.9 uh, .9 of the 10 of the boys that we photograph, we photograph more than 10 boys, but you know what I mean. Um, when they, when we, when Doug fires up the periscope, those boys, bam, they turn it on and they shine and they just go. And so, to your point, it's about selling the experience. And if they like you and they like what you're doing, they're gonna come back. They're gonna tell their friends. There you go. <laughs> 
Actually, I just want to say one thing with that. I have um, three things that I say. Build a relationship to build trust, to then build your business. Don't get on first paper and go, I do this, I do that. Build a relationship first, like what everyone's been saying. Build a trust and then build your business. Kathy, I think you were next. Did you want to ask a question? Yes. No, you do, know, it's, yeah. it's like you want to invite them. I still have a hard time asking them to get to the website, but now it's like, do you get really specific when you ask, or just in general, so that they can just explore things around the website, and then, like Johnny said, building that trust. I just okay. would love to hear a strategy input from your expertise. Yeah, okay, so what, what I was referring to was being very, very specific. You know, there's so much noise out there, and to get people's attention is, is very difficult, okay? So you've got them there in your periscope, but we, you know, so if you're trying to direct them to a, a specific piece of art, you could have a, an offer on a specific piece of art, take them to that page. You don't need them to make any more clicks than they need to make, you know? Take them to the home page, it's every likelihood they might get there and click off. So take them exactly to where you want them to go, exactly to where you want them to go. Grab the URL, pop that within the periscope, and that's where you're directing them to. To that specific page, yeah, absolutely. That, sorry, did you? Did, yeah, sorry, thanks, thanks, Kathy. Sorry, I don't know your name. Oh, uh, Randy. Randy? Yeah. Nice and loud. Um, so, this question comes from a fellow in Australia. Um, in the pet industry, a lot of business is necessarily local, pet sitters and pet traders and so on. How can you Periscope to actually find and target local customers? Okay, I've got a, um, an expert here, his name's Doug Cohen. He'll answer that. <laughs> so, I think, I think to find, to target local customers, I, I still think at this point in the game, in terms of finding local customers per se, still, we're, I don't know if we're quite there yet, because everybody isn't on Periscope. Your customers not, might not be on Periscope yet, but I think if you use Periscope, in the ways that I talked about before, like bringing people on, making it such a part of what you do, and bringing each client one by one when you have a client into the Periscope experience with your brand, especially if you're a pet sitter. I mean, people are so, people love their pets, right? So do a scope of your pet sitting with that pet, get their permission, and then they'll tell their friends, and that's how the word of mouth will spread. I think the experience of using Periscope and bringing your clients into that engagement, that live opportunity, I think will get them talking and that will help you find the other customers. Really, social media, so much of social media is all about a targeted word of mouth campaign, right? As a small business, it's about using these platforms to be a catalyst for the word of mouth. Word of mouth still happens offline a lot. But social media and online tools like this is the catalyst for speeding up that offline word of mouth. And let that, let your clients end up being the evangelists for your brand and use Periscope to just enhance the experience that much. The wow factor, the jaw-dropping wow factor of being involved in a live broadcast where people are coming in and commenting and, and, and are part of your community. You know, when you have a client there, and, and all of a sudden someone in Moscow or Turkey or Saudi Arabia or Israel is watching their pet, that's a pretty unique experience for that client who isn't familiar with Periscope. And that is what they're gonna talk about and tell their friends. That's how you use the platform. <laughs> See? There it is. There it is. Right, right? I just think, and, and you know what, here's the other thing that I wanted to circle back to Chris's question just really quickly for businesses that are trying to figure out, well, sorry, oh, sorry, all right. You know, my, my brand, my product isn't that social. It isn't, it isn't that exciting. You know, half of the stuff we scope about is not just a direct, here's how we take pictures. We do some really goofy, fun, shenanigans stuff that's not even photography related. 
We do photography stuff, but we also do non-photography stuff where we're just being our authentic, fun selves. And it's under our brand handle and people will remember the experience they had where maybe they just smiled or laughed at the Frameable Faces channel. And they'll come back when we are talking about our product. So that's, that's another way. Thanks, uh, thanks, Doug. Fido, thank you so much too for that bar. Um, I'm just going to go here first. I've got a few more minutes. I'm going to really rush through it, sir. How do you balance the need to sell, but you're not coming across as too salesy? Most of what you sold all the time on social media. Do you want to hear about uh, that type of question? How do you balance that? So, so you, you want to say how not to be salesy? Right, but how do you balance the need to sell, of course, when you're on your periscope, with not being too well, salesy? Um, all right, Victoria. Yeah, I don't know. 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 Get that e-commerce to make a sale. 
Okay, thanks for joining. This is Eric. Heading over. You're still live. You're still Woo, we're still live. I'm going to back it up. How do we do? It might help your voice a little bit. Are we good? Bleach helps too. Bleach? Bleach is not good. You're still on? We're still on. Woo! Hey now. That was fun. Brian Fanzo in the house. <laughs> Hello. What's up? Can I hold that so I can put my glasses on so I can see? All right. So All right, we're going to shut her down right now so we can talk to people. But thanks. Yeah, chocolate bombs. Yes. Chocolate bombs. <laughs> All right, we're shutting down. We'll be back later. Thanks, everybody.